Hi. Creativity is contagious. And in fact, the story I want to share with you today is the story on how I got infected with the virus of creativity and what do I do to infect other people with it. The reason why I'm so passionate about it is because as an academic scientist, I'm frustrated that we publish thousands of papers per year about our discoveries. But only a very few percentage of those results in real scientific breakthrough that have a real impact on our life. Are we scientists creative enough? Are we scientists innovative enough? Is our creativity supported enough? You know, when I started my PhD, I had this romantic idea that, you know, I'll be a scientist, I'll be one of the most creative people on Earth. Was I that stupid? Was, was that just a romantic idea of this young, naive PhD student? I mean, looking back now, I probably was. It, lo it really looks like that us, scientists, we should redefine our creative process. We should redefine our way of thinking if we really want to impact our society and we, do some, we want to do something meaningful. But what is a creative process anyway? I mean, I think that every time we start or try to solve a problem, we engage a creative process. I mean, the problem can be as simple as uh, I'm thirsty and I need a glass of water. I can either decide to walk to the bar and have a glass of water, or I can decide to invent a new form of water, eatable water, which I can basically have it in my pocket and eat it every time I'm thirsty. Now, I think we all agree that the first solution is definitely the easier, the faster, the most logical, the, the smartest, if you want. But I think we also all agree on the fact that the second solution is definitely the more creative. Now, I like sometimes to think and imagine how those different ideas are conceived in our mind. And I like to think that the, the logic ideas are conceived in a desk that looks more or less like this. I call it the logic desk. This desk is uh, clean, is neat. It only contains the tool that we need to make smart decisions. It's filled with our knowledge, not only the knowledge that we have read on the book, but also the knowledge that we have gained through our experiences. The more creative ideas are instead conceived in a different part of our, of our brain or on a different desk, if you want. I call it the messy desk. The messy desk is messy. It contains all kinds of tools, all kinds of dreams, all kinds of ideas. Good news is there are no rules in our messy desk. Everything is possible. Your dog can talk, your car can fly, Paralyzed people can walk. Cancer can be cured on your messy desk. You know, I never thought myself honestly that I would become a scientist. I was actually a proud surfer, and I wanted to actually open a surf shop with my friends. But one day, I met a person that changed my life. He was uh, a very esteemed chemist but also one of the best teachers in my university. And I remember that day very vividly because I was waiting for his lecture to start. It was a big lecture, it was his first lecture. About 300 people are waiting for him. The big guy is there, but he's waiting for the right time to start. I'm sitting on the first row and there are a couple of chairs empty close to me. He walks towards me and sits just beside me. He doesn't know me. He looks at the blackboard and then he tells me, you know what? This is the perspective I like to look at life from. It took me years 
to understand what he really meant. But what he really meant was that we should stay as curious, as enthusiastic, as open as students are. I ask every day whether or not I became too much professors. And if I ask that, if my answer is yes, I will ask one of your students or all my students to teach me how to become student again. And I'm asking you, did you become too much professor? And if, you answer, if, you're, if the answer is yes, ask one of your students to teach you on how to become student again. Now, as you can see probably from my shape, from my shape I did not open a surf shop, nor I become a surfer. I became scientist instead. And here I am, about 10 years later, joining one of the most famous genetic laboratories in the world. This is a picture with my supervisor. is uh, still one of the most exciting and the best scientists in the world. He's a full-time physician, but he's also a full-time uh, scientist. As you can imagine, his life is quite busy, and he only comes in the lab very late in the evening. I remember one day he was walking towards his office, and then he saw that I was in the lab, so he stopped by to tell me that it was late and I should go home. And then we started chit-chatting about life and philosophy and science, and then he told me something that really inspired me. He said, you know what, Vince? I think in this particular problem, we should be unfocused, but in a focused way. We had a great laugh out of it. But looking back from this stage now, that was the best lecture on creativity I've ever had. Let's be focused on our problem, but let's be unfocused on the possible solutions, because solutions can really come from everywhere. Now, those are just two examples of people that have particularly inspired me, that have left something in my, on my messy desk. But I promise you that I have never met anybody in my life that has not left me a big gift on my messy desk. And I also promise you that you have never met anybody in your life that has not left you a big gift on your messy desk. So the point is not how great and potential and beautiful your messy desk looks like. The point is, do we use it enough? Do we have free access to it? Are we encouraged to use it? And I'm afraid that, again, I have to say, probably not. To use your messy desk in your daily work, to conceive a project on your messy desk, you need the courage, the courage to fail. You need the passion, the passion to persevere even when life gets tough. And you need the motivation. The motivation that makes you walk where nobody has walked before. I found all these three things in my personal life and uh, in a story that um, I've never shared in public before. And that's the story of my son, who got diagnosed with a deadly cancer when he was one year old. can't really say how a parent feels like when you hear that. But I remember walking towards the pediatric oncology department. I mean, I always thought that this world is hell on earth. I never probably, I don't really remember whether I said it out loud, but I do remember the doctor turns towards me, I'm with my wife and with my son, and the doctor just putting her hands on my shoulder saying, you know what, this is the paradise on earth. Because this is the only place where miracles can still happen. Victor is now a healthy and happy boy, but during that time, I really gained the passion to unlock the key to my messy desk. And I gained the motivation to follow my dream, which was to start a laboratory whose main focus was to help people with cancer. 
The way we want to do it is to look at the problem from a completely, completely different perspective, to find solutions where nobody has ever looked. If you want extraordinary project, you first need extraordinary people. So when we hire people, we don't really look at how much do they know, but we really look, do they have a dream? Are they ready to be infected with the virus of creativity? Or are they vaccinated against it? Second thing we do is we never, never talk about projects. We always talk about dream. And we never talk about projects in an environment that is a um, work environment. The reason why we do it, because we want from the start to stimulate them thinking about the messy desk. The only way you can do it, is the moment you start with a student saying, oh, we should talk about your project, he's coming there with this logic desk. Everything he knows, everything he has learned. The moment you say, what is really your dream, over a coffee and over a beer, what would be great if you could do it, they are immediately switching to their messy desk. Well, my dream is to do this and that. And then we use our logic desk to see not if that dream is possible, but only how that dream is possible. And then I make sure that their project is their dream, and their dream is part of mine. One example of this is Peptigrad. Peptigrad is simply a virus in tumors clothing. It's actually a virus covered with tumor pieces. We, con we conceived this project just by looking at tumor from a completely different perspective. I mean, we all know that our immune system is not really able to spot tumors. And this is the reason why tumors usually grow. But on the other hand, think about it. Our immune system is so well in spotting viruses. And in fact, every time that we have a viral infection, our immune system is grabbing the virus and is destroying it. The way it does, it chops it in very small pieces. It presents these small pieces to what I call the effector cells, the effector police of our body. This effector police creates identity card that can be used to spot other viruses in the body and kill those viruses. Here is our idea. Why don't we take the tumor ourselves? And we chop the tumor ourselves in small pieces. And then we load these small pieces on the surface of a virus. When now this virus covered with tumors is given to a patient, the immune system of the patient spots the virus, gets alerted, chops the virus in small pieces, but because the virus is covered with tumor, it presents pieces of tumors now to the effector police, who now that can, can create dif different identity cards that can now go after the tumor and kill it. By using this technology, we are not only able to simply reduce the size of the tumor, but what we can we really do? We can create an immune reaction that is so strong so that the tumor is completely disappeared from the animals that can live happy, long life afterwards. So finally, who are we? We are our logic, our intelligence, our capability and possibility to make the smart decision, to make the right decision. And this is how we have evolved. This is how we run if there is a lion following us. There is no really creativity involved there. But we are also our emotions, our dream. The possibility of conceiving projects in the blurriness, because it's there in your imperfection when everything gets blurry that this creativity is kicking in. So to all my colleagues and to all my friends scientists, do not be afraid to surf the wave of your emotion, of your dreams. That's the only way we can do to go from this situation where we are now to this situation. So let's do it and change the world together. Thank you very much.